Installing Rails on Windows is a bit of a challenge, especially if you're a beginner. And from previous videos I've made uh, and the feedback I've gotten, I've come up with a bit of a, a different approach this time where we're going to create a Rails command prompt or a Rails sort of specific command prompt with the idea that we'll keep the installation somewhat isolated from the rest of your system. And I'm hoping that these changes will make the installation a little bit more transparent as to what's going on and how things are set up. And, uh, and hopefully it'll make it a little easier to troubleshoot uh, issues, you know, when they come up. And I'm happy to, if you have any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them and work through the, the problems. Rails is a very useful framework. I think there's a lot of value to it, and it's well worth getting to know. If you Once you get uh, more familiar with it, you'll probably move on to a different platform, such as Linux or OS X. But in the meantime, being introduced to Rails on Windows is perfectly fine. So to get started, let's click on Start, and we're going to find the command prompt. Um, you go to All Programs, click Accessories, and you should see Command Prompt. Click that to get it started. Now I've got the font a little larger so it's easier for you to see, but uh, you should see something very, very similar to this. It opens up in my home directory here. Now I want to create a directory off the root of C that can contain our installation and I'm going to call it ROW, short for Rails on Windows. So let's start that from the command line, type in mkdir, just like that, make dir, and let's specify backslash ROW. Okay, so the backslash says that we want to start at the root, and the row is going to be the name of the directory. Okay, so then we hit enter, sorry, hit enter, and then from there let's change directory to it, or cd, so we cd space backslash row, hit enter. Now when we hit dir, that's the way we list the directory uh, contents. You can see that it's got zero files, it says it has two directories. And for some of you out there, that might seem kind of strange. Uh, you might ask yourself, what is the dot directory and what is the dot dot directory? Well, the dot directory refers to the current directory, or in this case, the row directory. The dot dot directory means the parent directory, and, it, and it's helpful for navigating in, uh, in the command prompt. So if we want to go up one directory or up to the parent, we just do cd space dot dot, just like that. And then from there, if we need to go back to row, we, because we're already at the root, we don't have to specify the backslash. We can just type in ROW, like that. And so now we're left with the dot directory. And when, when could ever that be useful? Well, because, yeah, if you tried CDing to it, what would that do, right? Well, the dot directory, again, is reference to the current directory. So say we wanted to launch Explorer, and we wanted Explorer to open in the current directory. Well, we just type Explorer, space, and then the dot, right? And you can see how it loaded up Explorer in the row directory. So that's, that's where that's at. Let's actually, we'll leave that up for now. And what we want to do next is create a batch file for um, our Rails on Windows environment. So what is a batch file? A batch file is a file that contains a series of commands. And so instead of having to type everything out each time, you can wrap it up in a batch file. Now, the way we're going to create that file is type in notepad, like that, notepad. It's just a very simple text editor available on Windows. And so then notepad space and then the name of the file. So we're going to call that row.bat, short for batch, but that's the file extension for a batch file. Then hit enter. And you can see it says here, cannot find the row.bat file. Otherwise, it if, would have opened it if it could have found it, but it says, do you want to create a new file? And we'll say yes. So next, click a few, uh, hit enter a few times, just give yourself some space there, and type in start. So this is a command that's going to start the command prompt. And within quotes, we'll, we'll, we're going to type in the title of, of what we want to call the command prompt. So we're going to call it Rails on Windows. And then we're going to specify an option, the slash capital D option, where we're going to specify the path in which we want the uh, command prompt to open. So where should, what directory should it be in when it opens? And we want that to be C colon backslash ROW. So next, let's save that. We'll go File, Save, or Control S. And I'm just going to close this to make it a little less uh, busy. 
And let's try running the command. Actually, I'll just show you here now. DIR. Now, instead of no files, right, there is one file. And if you go over to the command prompt, or sorry, over to the explorer window that we opened, you can see that now there is a row.bat. Okay, so now how do you run the batch file? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. From the command prompt, we could type in row.bat, just like that. And you can see actually here, down here, before I bring that other one down, you can see that it echoed out the command. That was, so we ran row.bat, and this is the command that it ran within row.bat. And it launched this command prompt, and we are in the row directory, so that's good. And you can see that the title says Rails on Windows. Okay, so let's close that. And we can also launch it from the uh, Windows Explorer. We just double click, row.bat. And you can see that we've got the command prompt ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to close, uh, close that original command prompt down because now we've got the beginnings of our row.bat. Let's get that one going again. And one of the issues that we had uh, previously had to do with the path environment variable. And sometimes there'd be programs installed that, um, that Rails would miss mistake as something else. And so what we want to do is start off with a completely empty path and then only include on the path what we want on the path, okay? So um, if we echo out the current uh, contents of the path variable, we hit enter, you can see here and see how I wrapped path around with percent signs. That's how, we, that's how we reference the variable to get the contents here when we use echo. You can see that there's a list of directories and they're all separated by semicolons. When you go to run a command, the system will look through each of these directories to see if it can find it. Now, when we ran notepad earlier, there's a command uh, on earlier versions of Windows, it's not available, so if this doesn't work on XP or something like that, um, don't worry about it. But the, uh, there's a command called where, and if we type notepad, it'll go and look on that command. It'll go look through the path and tell us where the notepad.exe is, lo is located. If we type in where explorer, you can see that it tells us, oh, it's located there. And in this case, I'm not sure why there's two versions of Notepad, actually. Um, but anyway, it tells us that there's a Notepad e executable here. And here, with Explorer, it's located here. So let's go back to our batch file, and let's clear out the path variable. Okay, so we're going to type in Notepad again, and then row.bat. And you can see how it just came up. To clear out the path variable, let's type in set path equals, okay? And we'll just leave it like that, and we'll save it. And let's close that, and let's close this prompt. And so we're back to the Windows Explorer. Let's double-click row.bat and see what happens. Okay, so we've, we're able to launch the command prompt, and you'll notice um, when we type in notepad, it says it's not recognized an internal external command. And so, now why is that, right? Now, if we echo out path, right, it's echoing out nothing, okay? It's not, path isn't set. Now, so th what we have to do is add the location of notepads, uh, of the executable for notepad. And if you recall, um, uh, that's under the, under the Windows directory and or the System32 directory. Let's go back to the command prompt, or sorry, to the Windows Explorer. And another way to launch a notepad is if we right click on the file like this and we go to edit. And that should bring up notepad. So now when we set the path equal to something, let's actually set it to something. We'll type in C colon backslash and we'll type in Windows backslash system 32. Okay? So then hit control S or file save and let's close notepad let's close the command prompt and let's start this again so now we'll bring this down and if we echo out um, the path you'll see now that it has C Windows System 32 on the path okay and if we try to execute notepad let's see what happens let's type in notepad row.bat and you can see that row.bat came up 
Now let's close Notepad again. Now the next thing, let's try to get Explorer going, right? Explorer is a really handy thing to have available from the command prompt. If we type in Explorer dot, it says Explorer is not recognized. Well, what do we have to do? Well, that means we have to go and edit the, the row dot bat where we set the path. We have to set, we also have to add that directory for where Explorer is. So let's exit out of here and we right click on here to go back to edit. We could have um, opened it through the command prompt there. Uh, but anyway, so now we need to add a directory here. And the way we do that is we use a semicolon to separate the entries. And we'll now type in C colon backslash windows and hit control S to save it. And now, so now we've got two directories on the path, right, that the system's going to search when we run a command. Let's close the, close uh, notepad, double click the batch file again. Let's echo out the path. Let's just make sure that our path is set properly. So now we've got C colon Windows System 32 and we've got C Windows. If we type in Explorer dot, sure enough now Explorer comes back up. Right? If we want uh, Notepad row dot bat, sure enough it comes up. Okay? So uh, let's just go over what we need to make sure uh, works for you uh, before going on to the second video. Make sure that when you double click row.bat that it brings up the command prompt, right? It says Rails on Windows. It's in the row directory. And if we hit DIR, it should look like that, right? And if we type in notepad row.bat, it should launch notepad and you should see the contents of row.bat. And then as well, when we type explore and a space and a dot, that launches Explorer and shows row.bat. And with that, you're ready to go on to the second video.